Welcome back. You're listening to Real Talk with Brian and Dan on 1150 AM KKNW. I'm Brian. And I'm Dan. Our first guest joins us from International Business Associates, commonly known as IBA. IBA is a full-service business brokerage firm that specializes in selling privately held companies and family-owned businesses. The most important thing you should know about Stephen is that he is, a pa- he is passionate about business owners feeling empowered in making well-informed financial decisions with a partner they can trust. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Thank you. Hey, as we get started here, uh, we'd like to know a little bit about you. What do you do when you're not uh, brokering businesses? Well, I love to play golf. Do a little hot yoga, hang out with my kids. Definitely have been known to binge watch a few series and cannot believe that Sunday marks the end of Game of Thrones. Oh, I know. Oh, what would you think of that episode? Oh, God. <laughs> it was carnage. Crazy. It was carnage. Oh, my gosh. Well, so uh, this is a show about real estate. We do real estate talk and information, but we like to get to know our guests from a, a standpoint of when you were growing up in the house that you grew up in, what's a fond memory that you have? Well, the older I get and I realize how blessed I was, my parents actually bought a sort of late 1800s brownstone in New York, fully intact oh wow. with Victorian ceilings, Florida length mirrors, which they stripped off. You saw the original wood, marble floors. They bought it for $18,000, if oh. you could believe that, in 1970. It's probably worth about $2.5 million. Oh, wow. Today, wow. And it was a really pretty house. What part of uh, New York? Brooklyn, New York, an area called uh, Fort Green. Wow. Fabulous. So can you describe for our listeners what your company does? Well, our entire company is real estate agents like yourselves. We're not as handsome as Dan <laughs> and Brian. The reason we're Lottery real estate agents <laughs> is, uh, but we are a business brokerage firm. So we sell businesses very similar to the real estate process. And the reason we're all licensed is if a business owner owns the building they're in, we're able to sell their business and their commercial real estate as well. It also protects potential sellers knowing that we have licenses on file with the state of Washington, that we're regulated in terms of confidentiality, disclosure, representation. So it's a nice to have a actual business brokerage firm help with the sale of your business. So if the business is in a leased location, is part of your service renegotiating a lease or assisting in that portion? We generally get involved in that we facilitate, but usually the landlord deals directly with the buyer of a business and they come gotcha. to terms together. We don't get any kind of success fee on that. They deal directly. The landlords actually like it because they technically get a new tenant without giving out a commercial real estate fee. Okay. So this is not on the show sheet, but uh, how did you get started in this? Well, my wife and I, for 13 years, owned a franchise here in the area, very well known, called the Little Gym, Youth mm-hmm. Gymnastics mm-hmm. and uh, Motor Skill Building. We had three locations in uh, Renton, Maple Valley, and Federal Way. We did it for 13 years. It was, a, it was a beautiful thing to do while we raised our kids. But when it was time to be done, we're like, well, how do we get out of this? And we mm. started doing research on business brokers in the area, interviewed a number of them. I actually made a mistake choosing a different firm for six months that promised me a higher value Mm -hmm. but wasn't able to deliver. Then I went back to IBA, Mm -hmm. and I worked with them, and they completed the sale of our business. I got to know the principal well, and he invited me to go to real estate school, get my license, and join the team. So as I look at uh, a business broker and what what you do, how familiar with each business model do you need to be in order to help somebody sell their company? Well, chances are, because of the way IBA is structured as a team with multiple brokers, there's going to be somebody familiar with your model on the team. And that's what the principal does is he sort of vets the leads as they come in and he likes us to specialize. So, for instance, my specialty is retail and obviously uh, I'm in the education business, so the preschool, so the restaurant. And if it's something manufacturing or boating related, we have a specialist for that as well. So does IBA charge for its business evaluations? It does not, and that's the way it's been since Hmm. 1975. And IBA is the oldest firm in the Pacific Northwest. The reason being other firms sometimes charge, and it's not to say that it's not worth spending money on. A good valuation is a worthwhile tool to have. It's just that our position is, is that we take time up front with the seller They get to know us. We get to know them. We get a real sense of what it would be like to work together. 
We hope to show them our professionalism, our market knowledge when we deliver them this valuation, and we don't charge for it. It's really a vetting process for both parties. Is that somewhat unique in the industry? It is pretty unique. I think some like to charge an upfront fee, and it may not be a large, or they might just charge a a down payment if you want to list with them and then a success fee later in the transaction. There's a few different ways. The business brokerage world in the state of Washington, it really does vary from state to state. It's kind of like the Wild West out here. Mm -hmm. Not not as structured. Not as, regulated. As your real estate. And that's why it's nice to work for a firm that is licensed with the state of Washington. Right. Yeah. So when it comes to somebody hiring you and you say you work as a team, would they work with you or is it going to be designated off to like a junior broker or something like that? We don't have any junior brokers. Everyone is equal. So once they engage with the broker that knows their business model, that's the only person they'll ever work with. And all the way to the very end, from the beginning, the first meeting to the valuation, we facilitate every part of the transaction right through to the closing room. Mm -hmm. They need us in the, tra in the, in the transition process. We're there mm -hmm. as well. Now, what the nice thing is, is no matter how many years, whether it's myself with four years experience, we have people with double the G years, we always have our principal and managing broker who's got about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't take that many transactions of his own because he like, likens himself to a coach. So he's always there to coach, consult, Oversight. and provide wisdom. Yeah. And the customers never see that. Right. right. So how important is broker experience in the sale of a business? I'd say it's really important. I mean, we all have to do our, our first deal, and uh, it was scary, my first one a few <laughs> years back. But again, I had that, that principle of managing broker to lean on. Yeah. And once you get going, it's amazing how in every single transaction, I've, I've done seven to ten now, I don't know exactly how many, there's always something where experience doesn't even apply, where it's just mm -hmm. you sort of go into your gut and you've, you've spent time with the parties, and again, you just come up with, a strategy. It could be anything. It could be a difficulty with the landlord, with the banker. All of a sudden, something will come up, you know, that wasn't discussed way back when. We try and, you know, discuss all financial terms, everything ahead of time, but, you know, something will come up. And that's where the wisdom of some experience comes in. But in the end, you just have to get on the phone and communicate, not via email. We're very much more in person and on the telephone. We're old school that way. <laughs> well, Brian, I see so many parallels between right. this and real estate, right? Right. Talking about the prep work, getting a business mm -hmm. ready to sell, very similar to uh, real estate. Mm -hmm. um, what are the costs then associated with this? So again, we don't charge for the valuation. We never charge for anything. The only way we get paid, similar to you guys, is if we deliver a buyer who's financially capable of completing the transaction at terms that the seller is happy with, and more than anything, somebody that they really believe will carry on their legacy and they're willing to spend one, two, three months in a transition process. At mm -hmm. that time, and after everything is closed and they've got funded, we're paid right out of escrow, just like real estate agents. And I'd say a good gauge to this is basically 6 to 10%. 10% on mm -hmm. smaller values, and that is the total commission that a person will pay. Sometimes, not as often as you guys, a buyer might have a business broker of their own, so they get paid out of that. So that's the total. There's no more than that. I see. Hmm. So I asked you earlier about assisting with the lease process, but in the sale, if the business owns the real estate, you facilitate the sale of that real estate. But I'm curious, are there times when the business and the real estate might be sold separately? Yeah, absolutely. They may... Well, Folks may want to keep their real estate. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then uh, lease it back to the Heck new. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's as, a great idea. As you all know, commercial real estate right. is one of the most amazing investments there's out there, especially in this area. I mean, there are people that have buildings that they own free and clear, and they're just printing money, to be honest. So hmm. it, it can happen separately. Usually we like to do it together, but usually 7 to 10, 70% or so of our clients are folks retiring. Mm -hmm. And when they decide it's time to go, they really want to liquidate everything. They want to be done. So yeah, I think it, de it depends, right? I mean, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of times uh, the value of that business is in what it's doing in the location it's in. Right. right. Number That's one rule in real estate, location, location, location. True. Right. True. And yep. sometimes we will educate someone and say that this is not a project for us to sell your business. To be honest with you, it, it was a good business. It served you for a while, but you're better off just selling the real estate and looking for a different use for the building because you will make more in the long run. Hmm. 
Now, do you then you you handle the commercial real estate sale? Not in that case. In that Not case, in that case. In that case, would it, we would refer it on to one of our referral partners. We have a few. Mm-hmm. IBA really approaches things almost if from a family perspective. Like if the the person we're speaking to was an aunt or an uncle, what would be the best advice we would give them? I've talked myself out of many of sale, and I've convinced people to keep their business longer. Mm. Sometimes they think they're done. I'm like, hey, if you can do this for a couple more years, just remember, you know it best. And when it comes time to sell, you're you're only going to get a few years or so of, of what you're making this year. So just then you're going to have a tax event. You know, you and I have talked about this before in the past, like when is a good time to get your business evaluated? And I, I think I know what your answer is going to be, but when is a good time? If you're an owner of a business, do you need to wait until you're thinking about exiting or? Well, our caveat that we do free valuations, it really is when somebody is honestly, seriously considering it, selling it within the next year or two. Okay. So if it's they want to know what it's going to sell for five years from now, it's of no value because our valuation strategies really incorporate the last three years. Like so right focus, now. Yeah. We What's focus on? on the last three years in the current picture. All right. So I asked you the how did you get started. So now what I'd like to know is who is an ideal candidate besides, I mean, besides somebody that's selling their business in the next year, who's somebody that you've talked to recently that would be a good introduction for you? Well, hopefully other realtors listen to this show, and I'll speak quickly, because the ideal candidate is who I, I was lucky enough to stand in front of a room of 30 realtors yesterday. Oh, nice. And mm. introduce to them a program that IBA has. First of all, IBA doesn't stand for Independent Brokers Association. We're not, <laughs> we're not in co- competition. But you guys, you real estate, residential real estate agents, you're the connectors of the world. You touch mm-hmm. everybody. And we have a referral program where if somebody – says they want to move out of the area and they're done and they want to retire. They have to sell their home. And if they have a business, they probably need to get started on their business before the home because it can take a little bit longer. So we have a program where if a real estate agent refers someone to IBA and we end up taking on the project and selling, we pay you guys right out of escrow too. You could be either on the buyer or the seller side. So this is just something I'd really, I'm really making a big focus on just spreading the word and the awareness. It's just something to know that. So the networking aspect of that. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Awesome. Um, all right, we got so, about two minutes left. Did you yeah. have one? Well, I was just thinking, I'll bet this is tough sometimes, uh, people letting go of their baby as they've spent a lifetime perhaps building this business, is that, uh, how does that play out? Well, in the end, and I, I can honestly say I've done that each of the times. I mean, I've had a couple of uh, businesses where there have been multiple offers. And the first question, I and they don't necessarily stack up financially, but I can remember a meeting or two where I'd say, if if who is the person first? Before we look at the offers financially, who is the person that you see as the best fit to carry on your legacy? At the end of the day, numbers mm-hmm. aside, and I think I think it might be a little bit different than residential real estate, although there's a little bit element. A business is more so. There has to be a connection between the buyer and the seller. The seller really has to like the buyer and see that they're going to be able to carry on what they built. They have the same level of passion. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and be uh, willing to help them. Yeah. Residential, Both. we call that the love letter. Right. And we usually play that last. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's part yeah. of the process from the minute they meet, you can see. That's probably the most important process. It really yeah. Is. yeah. I mean, yeah. basically, like you said, you bu- you spent years or decades, right, building. Pouring this, your soul this, into it. Yeah. Yep. You, the last thing you want to do is have somebody just look at the bottom line and not, yeah. not get passionate about it. And that, that's why I like it so much. It's just so interesting to be part of that moment. And the buyers, I mean, they're just so nervous. They may have never owned a business before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're scared. And I mean, this human being came into their life. I mean, they, they can vet them upside and down, but you don't really know the person. I mean, right. And you're trusting them that they're, this is what they built. These are the numbers behind it, and it's going to carry on. There's so much goodwill in it in these businesses that it really does come down to the people. Awesome. That's great. So, Stephen, how do our listeners get a hold of you? Our website is I, as in Igloo, B as in boy, A as in apple, inc.com. That's one way. Or my name is Stephen. Again, my cell phone directly is 425 443 Two three two two, or email is Stephen with a P H H at I B A I N C dot com. Stephen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Stay tuned for our guest. Our next guest is also a Stephen. After the break, we'll be talking estate planning with Stephen Walter of Legacy Estate Planning. We'll be right back. <laughs> 